Hello everybody, my name is Caroline Diata Edwards. I'm a director at Fortuna Admissions and I'm here today with my colleague Jessica Chung, who was an associate director of MBA admissions at UCLA Anderson and is now an expert coach at Fortuna Admissions. Uh, so Jessica, um, we wanted to talk about candidates who have a concern about their GMAT or their GPA, the academic track record, um, and how to potentially uh, mitigate um, some weakness in that dimension. Um, mm -hmm. I know you've seen lots of candidates like that and, and clients um, with, with similar mm -hmm. issues at, at uh, Fortuna, so what advice would you give? Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful question, Caroline, and definitely, like you mentioned, one that we get a lot. Um, definitely got a lot of those when I was working um, in the admissions committee at UCLA Anderson and with clients today uh, with Fortuna. Um, you know, I think the best way is, number one, to not think about yourself as a number. So you are not your GMAT score, you are not your GPA, and I mean, it is a, a significant portion of the application but it is a holistic application review process and really every part component of the application is looked at and pondered upon by the admissions committee. So I think just um, kind of thinking about it in that perspective, taking a step back and looking at it that way, um, it, it, it kind of helps as you're putting together your entire application um, as a whole. But in terms of mitigating specifically a, a GMAT or a test score that is on the lower end of the scale, um, or maybe lower academics. Um, there are a couple of things I think that a candidate can do. Um, number one, you can always consider retaking the GMAT or, or the GRE. And most schools, I mean, I mean, definitely my, um, I would disclaimer is you should make sure to talk to the admissions offices of every school you're applying to. But generally speaking, most schools are open to candidates taking the tests more than once. Um, and so it could be that you take it once, you maybe weren't very prepared for the format of the test, or you know you just you know you had some nerves because it was the first time taking a GMAT or GRE. Then you know re consider retaking it. Look at the elements that really um, you found that you found were difficult. Focus on maybe um, strengthening or, or getting some more practice and some more assistance to help you to address those areas. Um, and then you can go into the test again a bit more prepared. Um, the other part to that though is. Don't think about it as, oh, I can just keep taking the GMAT over and over and over until I get the best score because there's going to come a point where your score is not really going to improve that much and your ROI is just really not going to be there. It's probably better than just to spend the rest of your time uh, focusing on really making sure the rest of your application pops. So, but anyways, you know, definitely consider that um, most schools I don't think necessarily average scores. They'll probably see a history or record of the times you've taken the test or sat for the test, but generally they'll look at the highest score um, when it comes to evaluating their candidates. Um, I'd also, uh, you know, highly recommend thinking about ways that you can highlight any analytical or quantitative work experience that you might have. So, you know, you might come from an investment banking background um, or some sort of other analytical experience, but maybe you're not the best test taker. Um, but, you know, again, since it's a holistic review process, I would say look for ways that you can highlight some of that very quantitative or analytical um, work that you've done. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely address that in your, uh, you know, in interviews or in any discussions you might have with members of the admissions committee, because I'm sure that could be, you know, a, a, an area that they might be concerned about. Um, so, so, you know, that's always a good way just to kind of look back, take a look at your resume and see if you can show ways that you've had that kind of experience in real life because, you know, business school is a practical degree, so you want to make sure that you highlight that you're, you're able to, you know, really do well in those kinds of analytical situations. Um, and also one other thing I'd recommend is if you come from, and this is more for those who perhaps come from um, an undergrad major where you didn't have much quantitative uh, courses, uh, perhaps maybe take a course in calculus or statistics or some other kind of pretty heavily quantitative um, course where you can showcase that you can demonstrate or do well in these classes um, you know, prior to starting business school. Um, so if you've taken a calculus course in undergrad and you're an engineer and you've gotten A's in all these courses, it's probably not going to make that much of a, uh, a difference if you take that class again at an extension program or whatnot. Um, but it's really for those if you want to add or supplement to your academic record or history, um, you know, that might be useful just to give uh, the admissions committee a bit more reassurance about your quantitative strength. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, you can reassure them on, on your ability, but also, you know, your motivation and your commitment to prepare for the program. 
um, because sometimes, you know, admissions committee will see a candidate and they're really excited about their profile, but they're a bit nervous about, um, you know, particularly quantitative ability if they don't have that type of background through their work or through, um, you know, a lot of the academic experience. So, um, you know, taking some additional courses shows that, um, you know, you, you're, you're really working hard to prepare yourself to be able to hit the ground running when the, when the MBA program starts. So, um, you know, admissions committees take that as a very positive signal that, um, you know, you're doing everything you can to, to make sure that um, you're well prepared for the program. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you very much, Jessica. Okay. You're welcome.